Campbell, when he was fit and on top form, unstoppable. Absolutely unstoppable. Pace, power, his left foot, some of the goals he scored. Wow. Well. Marcelo, he's got three to pick out. It's the spectacular! It's Gareth Bale is the greatest Welsh footballer of all time, and after his early retirement in 2023, it's easy to forget how good he really was. The five-time Champions League winner was one of the most explosive players the world has ever seen, and no matter how big the occasion, he would rise to it. But that wasn't always the case. Bale was born in Cardiff, Wales, and at just nine years old was invited to join Southampton's youth academy. He was a natural athlete. His incredible stamina and speed, combined with his technical ability, made him impossible to defend. His school's PE teacher even had to restrict him for the sake of the other kids. He wasn't allowed to use his left foot or take more than one touch on the ball. At Southampton, he consistently ranked first in stamina tests, but he was never the fastest. He grew eight inches in just 18 months, and his pace eventually caught up. On the 17th of April 2006, a 16-year-old left back by the name of Gareth Bale made his debut for Southampton in the championship. He played consistently and went from strength to strength, earning the reputation as a free-kick specialist. He capped his incredible debut season by winning the Football League Young Player of the Year, with 5 goals and 12 assists in 45 games for the Saints. His single season at Southampton prompted Tottenham to pay 14.7 million euros for his services but it would take a while for him to get going in North London. His first two seasons saw him play 24 times in the Premier League, not winning a single one of those games. But in his third and fourth season, things began to change. I saw his transition from sort of boy to man, and I watched him go from a left back struggling to get in the team, potentially going to Nottingham Forest, to then become one of the world's greatest players. Like in training, like he was, the best player in training every day and it was like weird like, and he comes to games and he'd be a bit nervy and he was playing left back and I always say about it's like playing Cristiano Ronaldo right back it's like he had no real defensive qualities um, but then as soon as he got moved further forward that was the change and the confidence grew and he was he's quite he's quite shy as a lad you know so when his confidence grew then he came out and then the real Gareth could come out October 20th, 2010 would be the date that the world was introduced to the new and improved Gareth Bale. In Tottenham's first ever Champions League campaign, Bale scored a stunning hat-trick in a group stage fixture against Inter Milan at the San Siro. Four goals down at half-time and down to 10 men, Bale put on an incredible display in the second period that despite Spurs losing 4-0, still stands as one of the greatest individual performances in the competition's history. In the reverse fixture at White Hart Lane, Bale scored another two in a 3-1 victory and absolutely obliterated Mykon, the greatest right back in the world at the time. He was direct and clinical, a potent mix which made Bale unplayable at times. And then he started getting the ball, kicking it past people and just running. But you're doing that, you're doing this to Premier League defenders and in the Champions League where you're just knocking it past people and you're just running past them. It's like, it's unbelievable. But I just remember seeing him and then obviously playing against him the following season and he came back and he was like a monster. Like all of a sudden he's grown, he's, he's, he's just massive. Mm. But what has he been doing? What's he been doing in the off-season? I, I played against Gareth Bale um, many moons ago now at, at Southampton. And he was playing left back and I was playing right back. Let, 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 let's say I got, I got the better of him. Yeah, I probably ate him for lunch. Forward a few seasons, he goes to Spurs. And subconsciously I'm thinking, it's only Gareth Bale, I can, I can deal with him. I've had him at South, Southampton. And it was a massive, massive mistake. He destroyed me. The skinny kid who arrived at Spurs was now a machine. He went from number three to number 11 and had won the PFA Players Player of the Year twice, the PFA Young Player of the Year, the Football Writers Association Player of the Year, and was named in the UEFA Team of the Year twice. Real Madrid liked what they saw and spent a then world record fee of 101 million euros on the Welshman. After scoring on his debut against Villarreal, the first half of Bale's inaugural season in Spain was plagued by injuries, and that came alongside some media criticism, something he would have to endure throughout the majority of his spell in Spain. But it's better to leave him alone, don't make him pressure, do pressure to another player, leave him alone, because I'm sure 100% that he's going to do well for the, for the club, he's going to help us a lot, because he's a fantastic player, he's a fantastic boy, and he always wants to learn. Cristiano Ronaldo was right and Bale would silence the doubters in the Copa del Rey final against Barcelona, 
Contrao. Bale. Oh, Bata. Beat the pace here by Gareth Bale. It's a terrific run. Can he go all the way? It was a goal that looks like it shouldn't belong in top-level football amongst elite athletes. But it was business as usual for Bale, who did the same thing a few weeks before against Iceland. Just over a month after scoring in the Copa del Rey final, Bale was added again in the Champions League final against Atletico Madrid, putting his team ahead in the 110th minute of an eventual 4-1 victory to seal Madrid's 10th European Cup, the fabled La Decima. Bale finished his debut season with 22 goals and 16 assists in all competitions. The following season, his form continued with 17 goals and 11 assists in all competitions, including a goal in the third major final in a 2-0 win over San Lorenzo as Madrid won the FIFA Club World Cup. In the 2015-16 season, Zinedine Zidane took over as Real Madrid manager, and Bale had his best La Liga season of his career with 19 goals and 11 assists. Zidane helped get the best out of his once favourite player. Mais sinon, il y a toujours des joueurs qui, qui, ressortent, qui ressortent du lot. On regarde Cristiano, par exemple, à Madrid. Le problème, c'est que cette année, en fait, celui qui me fait le plus impression sur, sur les dernières compétitions que j'ai vues, il ne fait pas la Champions League. Il, est, il fait plutôt l'autre coupe. Et c'est belle, en fait. Donc, donc voilà. Justement, en fait, il n'est pas comparable, en fait. Il est à part. C'est un joueur qui, qui moi, me, fait, me, me fascine, en fait. Il est, redout, il est redoutable, en fait. Los Blancos made it to the Champions League final, where Bale assisted the team's only goal and went on to score in the penalty shootout win over Atletico Madrid, collecting his second CL medal. Despite suffering several injuries during the following season, he managed to feature 19 times for Madrid as they won their 33rd La Liga title. After being out for more than a month, he returned to action for the 2017 UEFA Champions League final in his hometown, Cardiff, which Real Madrid won 4-1 over Juventus. The 2017-18 season saw Bale back amongst the goals. He featured in Real Madrid's victories in both the UEFA Super Cup and the Spanish Super Cup. He also featured in the club's victorious FIFA Club World Cup campaign, winning a third trophy before 2018 had even begun. He scored 21 goals across the season, but there are two in particular that will live long in the memory. In the Champions League final against Liverpool, he scored an overhead kick from the edge of the 18-yard box, regarded as one of the greatest goals in Champions League history, and a speculative 40-yard strike that went through the hands of goalkeeper Loris Carriers, resulting in a 3-1 victory over Liverpool, helping Madrid win a third Champions League in a row. He became the first substitute to score twice in a Champions League final and was named man of the match, but he was still frustrated. I need to be playing. I need to be playing week in, week out, and that hasn't happened this season for one reason or another. Um, I had a about five, six week injury at the start of the season, and I've been fit ever since. So, um, yeah, obviously now I'll, I have to sit down in the summer and, uh, and discuss it with my agent and, yeah, take it from there. Things were never the same in Madrid after that. He would go on to play for three more seasons with a productive loan back to Tottenham in between. And despite winning plenty more silverware, his relationship with the club and the fans deteriorated. Pitar otro día a Bale no me gusta porque es un jugador histórico de este club, es un jugador que 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 ha hecho muchos goles importante en este club, entonces eh, es un jugador cuando pita un jugador así está pitando la historia de este club, entonces yo creo que no me gusta, no me gustó. In 2019, Bale celebrated Wales reaching Euro 2020 with the now infamous banner reading, Wales, Golf, Madrid, in that order, hitting back at a former Real Madrid sporting director, who initially complained to Spanish radio that those were his priorities, and in that order, but it was the final nail in the coffin. Even now, I mean, he's still the same guy, and he gets a lot of stick because he's not, he's not in the press or he's not, um, he doesn't stick up for himself much in, in, in the press, but he's just a, a nice lad. He's not, I think he's had a lot of, sort of grief from Real Madrid fans and you know when he thought he, he sort of cared about Wales more than than Real Madrid but if anyone won the amount of things he's won at Real Madrid you know he deserves to be respected. His club career would end in the United States with Los Angeles FC in 2022 where of course he scored a crucial goal to help them win the MLS Cup. But let's go back to that banner. The top priority was Wales so let's talk about it. The impact on his country cannot be overstated. He achieved so much for Wales that football has overtaken rugby as the sport of choice for the first time in the country's history. He made his debut at 16 and went on to make 111 appearances, scoring 40 goals, both all-time records. 
The six-time Welsh Player of the Year led them to three major tournaments, with their only previous one being a World Cup in 1958. He excelled at Euro 2016, scoring in all three of Wales' group stage matches, and going all the way to the semi-finals with a 2-0 defeat to eventual champions Portugal. Wales returned five years later at the rearranged Euro 2020, where they reached the last 16. But his greatest achievement was bringing Wales back to the world stage. He scored both goals in a 2-1 win against Austria, which sent Wales to the World Cup qualification playoff final. In the final, Bale's free kick was deflected into the net by Ukraine captain Andrei Yarmolenko, giving Wales the lone goal in a 1-0 victory and a ticket to the World Cup. At the tournament itself, in their opening group stage game against the United States, Bale was awarded a penalty kick after being fouled in the box with Wales 1-0 down. He converted to equalise, and it proved to be Wales' only point and goal of the tournament, but it was priceless to the country of just over 3 million people.